In this video, we're gonna look at how arrays work in JavaScript. Uh, and there are two parts to this video. First is kind of the short demo, which you might have seen somewhere else. And the rest is the kind of extended part that goes into the ECMAScript specification. So if you have already seen the short demo video, uh, I'm gonna put a timestamp uh, somewhere now uh, so you know where to skip to go to just the extended part. Did you know that in JavaScript, the length of an array does not necessarily have to equal the amount of elements? Um, so here we have some code and this is kind of the normal way to change the length. So we just have an array with two elements and we just push another element to it. And we can see that the length goes from being two to being three. Uh, but there's another way to do it, which is to just assign a new length. And it turns out that this is perfectly valid. You can just assign it to whatever number you want. Um, and when you do this, there are kind of two scenarios. One is that the new length that you assign is less than the actual amount of elements, or two, the length that you assign is greater than the actual amount of elements. Um, so in this case, the length that I'm assigning is greater than the actual amount of elements. And when you do this, nothing much actually happens. We can see we just go from having an array with a length of three to having a length of 100 and still only has three elements. And this is fine. This, perf this is perfectly valid. Um, node is kind of displaying these empty items. And this is just to show that there is a mismatch between amount of elements and length, but these aren't real elements. It didn't create any elements. So it's still just an array with a length of 100 and only three elements. That's perfectly allowed. Um, and we can actually go one step further. And after we do this, we can push a new element to the array. So let's see what happens. And we can see that it gets appended here to the end and the index of D is 100. So it actually uses the kind of length as an anchor point of where to push itself. It does not use the amount of elements. So we can have a situation where we actually have like empty space in the middle of our array. Um, yeah. And I said there were kind of two scenarios, one where the length that you assign is greater than the actual amount of elements and one where it's less than the actual amount of elements. And that's the case I want to show now. So here we have an array with three elements and I assign a length of one. And what happens in this case, is that we go from having an array with a length of three to having a length of one, but it actually cuts off the additional elements. So like JavaScript recognized that uh, this length of one, these uh, elements exceeded that and then it cut them off, deleted them. So kind of the new rule could be that uh, the length of your array has to be greater than or equal to the amount of elements it can't be less than the amount of elements. Otherwise, JavaScript will cut off your array. This is the extended part of the video, and I'm gonna kind of guide you through the ECMAScript specification and show you how I used it to analyze JavaScript arrays to find out like exactly how they worked. Um, so first of all, what is the ECMAScript specification? Uh, that's important context. Um, it's this very, very long document that JavaScript adheres to. So there's this committee and there's all these very, very smart people who write out all the kind of internal algorithms of ECMAScript, which and JavaScript kind of adheres to ECMAScript. So ECMAScript and JavaScript are kind of synonymous. They're kind of the same thing or not really, but you can kind of think of them as the same thing. And this long specification describes how ECMAScript works. So it describes how JavaScript works basically. Um, and here where I am right now, I am here under ordinary and exotic object behaviors. And then I am in the built-in exotic objects, internal method and methods and slots and I'm under array and I'm under arrays define own property. So 
an exotic object that is an object that um, has internal methods that don't match kind of normal objects like you'll find. So define on property, that's an internal method that we can't really access. It's inside the internal methods of JavaScript and arrays have a different implementation than usual for this. And that's what you're looking at right now. Um, yes, so I've kind of mapped out the functionality of this method. So um, we have kind of three main splits of logic. The first one is, uh, and oh, I should explain these arguments. We have P and then we have disk or descriptor. It stands for descriptor. And if you don't know what property descriptors are, just know that it's like, it's basically an object that holds attributes about the property. Um, and among those attributes are the property value. So basically the descriptor is the property value. You can kind of think, think of it as, um, but yes. So if P the property key is not an array, it's not an array index and I'll get into what an array index is in a bit. So if it's not an array index or length, like this string length. So if it's neither of those, then it just calls ordinary define own property. And in the ECMAScript specification, that's here. So it's kind of the last bit of, of this function, but I think it's, it's easier if we take that first. Um, so if we go into this one, basically, I mean, it, it gets kind of complicated, uh, but basically it's like just defining the property. So in this um, kind of split of the logic, we just define the property and I can go to the code and here I have an example. So we have an array with three elements and we have a property of hello. I assign it to world. Hello is not an array index and it's not length. So it's just gonna kind of use the ordinary define on property. And we can see that here. So we have these three elements and then we have hello and that was just assigned to world. Easy. Um, so that's the kind of normal thing. Then we have the uh, most used part of the logic when it comes to array. Normally you're not doing this with arrays. It looks kind of weird. Um, but that's if P is an array index. And what is an array index according to the specification? So that's described here. And basically it's a numeric string above zero, um, which can sound strange if you're used to using numbers for indexes. Um, but you have to know that when you use a property on an array or like an object and you use a property that's a, a number, it's going to get converted into a string. So that's why, a valid array index is actually a string in the ECMAScript specification. Um, yes. Um, but yeah, but the value of that has to be above zero. Um, so that's this branch of logic that we're in right now here, and we can see it here. And what we do is we get the old length descriptor. And one tip is that you can click on these things and then you can see them highlighted. Um, and then we do some assertions. Don't worry too much about that. At some point we, oh yeah, let me see here. So all this other stuff doesn't matter too much, but here at H, uh, we call ordinary to find own property, which we know. So we just start, start off by just defining this element in its, uh, with its index as its key. And then we check if that succeeded, all that. And then we do a check here. <clears throat> so we, we see if the index is greater than or equal to the old length. And if it is, we take the length, the descriptor of the length, and we add, we make, set it equal to, <clears throat> we set its value attribute equal to index plus one, and then we redefine length. Otherwise we don't redefine length. So let's see that in code. 
Um, so here we have, let me run this. So here we have an array with three elements, a length of three. Then we define an element using the, uh, the key of 10. And let me show you that this actually also works. So this 10 will get internally converted to a string. Yeah, uh, just so you remember that. And um, yes, so what happens here is that it actually goes through all of this logic because the index is greater than or equal to the all length, which is three. So that's 10 is definitely greater than that. So it's gonna redefine length, which is why we see that the length is now equal to 11. It's gonna redefine it as the index plus one. So that's why we set here 10 and then the length becomes 11. And then we have these empty items, which I have talked about. Uh, but then we have here E, which I now set using the index four. And then in that case, the length doesn't change. So the length now remains the same because E is kind of here in the middle. And so it doesn't go, it doesn't branch off. So basically this if statement isn't uh, true, uh, this assertion. Um, yes. And here's kind of the land, last branch of the logic, which is that if the P is equal to length. So then it has like some special things which you, ha you have seen, uh, but let's actually look at it in the specification. So it has its completely own little function, arrays at length, and it does a bunch of stuff. It's not very important, most of it, or, or it is, but it's not very interesting, most of it, uh, or not, not for this video at least, um, but yeah. Basically, things split up um, in two, and that is if the new length is greater than or equal to the old length, or if the new length is less than the old length. So let's start with the first one. So let's find that here. So here we're actually doing this comparison. And yeah, so all the stuff before this, it's basically just like some conversion and assertion and we get the old length and yeah. But here's the actual kind of interesting if statement and we just redefine length. And you have seen that. So uh, that's the kind of case where not much happens um, here. So here I do it with the 50 and then the length just changes and we get these empty items. But if that is not the case, we at some point go into a for loop where um, the property keys, that is an array index whose numeric value is greater than or equal to new length. Um, we loop over those and then we delete them. So that's also noted here. So that's the case now when I change the length to two, we can see that C and D both got deleted. Um, and that's noted here in this specification right here. Um, so yeah, that was the fine own property of uh, arrays. So I hope this uh, kind of helped you understand maybe a bit of the ECMAScript specification and maybe uh, will help you read it yourself. Um, Thanks for watching.